Sorry. <laughs> howdy, howdy, everyone. Welcome back to the Luck It All podcast. This is your host, Elias Roush. We're going to do kind of a condensed uh, top 10 2023 review of over 50 plus movies that we've seen of the 2023 year. We're still trying to catch up on a handful of movies as well. I wanted to um, go ahead and get my list out there. With what I've watched, I'm feeling pretty comfortable about it. There's maybe one movie that might have made my top 10 of 2023 that I have not watched, which was the movie Past Lives. Um, Hearing great things about that, but I have not seen that. Other than that, I believe that's the only movie that um, would have gotten on my top 10 of 2023 of uh for the list so everything else that we're about to talk about um i'm pretty comfortable with um the list it's been it's been an interesting year in my opinion regarding 2023 movies i'd say there were a lot of interesting attempts at uh, more original movies and movies that kind of uh reflected Movies that reflected uh, past times or even uh, nostalgia in a way, such as the Barbie movie, such as uh, the the, um, the biographical books, such as um, Oppenheimer that were heavily based on literature that was handed down from handed down to certain directors. And uh, we've discussed all of these a little bit more in depth in the Oppenheimer reviews and the Barbie reviews and the more in depth reviews on the channel. So go be, go ahead and check those out as well. Um, thank you all for bopping into the chat and hopping into the live, no matter where you're watching on YouTube, the VOD or Twitch or wherever you're interacting with the Luggadel podcast. Um, we appreciate it. Again, um, Dove Weiser, a buddy of mine, um, Drew, he's one of our buddies on the uh, the Fortnite that we play just about a couple times a week, and uh, he helped us uh, get to 100 followers on Twitch today. So I just wanted to give a little shout out there. I appreciate everyone listening, watching, following along the Luckadel podcast, and helping support. Thank you ever so kindly. Um, so yeah, today we are going to discuss the top 10 movies of 2023 uh, for everyone that's just now flooding into the chat a little bit late. Like I said, I think I've seen just about all the movies that I think that will have made the top 10. The one movie I think that I don't believe, um, I, I'm not sure where it would have made the list might have been past lives, but let's go ahead and start the reviews of, uh, or not the reviews, let's just start start the list at um, number 10. Number 10 was a movie I didn't hear too many people discuss. It was a Jake Gyllenhaal-led um, movie. It was the movie that was loosely based off of two individuals that were, um, I guess they're technically POWs. They were prisoners of war and this is movie was called the covenant i believe this movie was uh it was kind of unexpectedly um it it, it was unexpectedly full of heart in ways that i wasn't quite um i was not ready for you know they it kind of came out at the beginning of 2023. I think it was within the first three months. I don't have the, the a specific date off the top of my head, but um, it was one of those movies that kind of came out of left field. I thought it was going to kind of be a generic um, war slash action film, maybe a little bit of drama mixed in there. And it kind of, it did fill those um, shoes of those expectations but it it went a little bit further there's a, a slab of of heart that comes with this movie and i think that the dynamic between the two individuals i, I don't forgive me i don't have the other actor's name that Jillian hall works with on here but their dynamic is a lot stronger in this movie than i was uh i was anticipating at first i was like this is this is really working for me in ways that i wasn't uh I had no idea that this was going to um, reflect. And so that that movie is uh, The Covenant. Number nine, Air. 
This is the Ben Affleck directed movie starring it's uh, it's it's starring uh, Matt Damon, Chris Tucker, stacked cast. It's got Affleck is in it too. He's playing um, Phil Knight, I believe, is the uh, Nike founder. Anyways, the movie is. Is one of those kind of hustle and bustle films. It feels like a movie that would have came out in November, but um, it came out in like um, March ish. Chris Tucker is hilarious. Matt Damon is bringing another amazing performance. Ben Affleck is channeling uh, another side of himself. I, I've really learned that I've come to enjoy Ben Affleck when he's playing kind of these little uh, kind of over-the-top roles. I don't like him playing the everyman because I kind of think he's a little bit more goofier than the everyman. And that's why the the roles I enjoy him in, or such as The Last Duel, where he's kind of playing this, you know, flamboyant, fun, crazy king that's just like, yeah, yes, do whatever, party whatever, do no, 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 no. And, uh, and here he's kind of playing... Uh, a more eccentric type Phil Knight, uh, just uh, always got these crazy glasses on and this crazy haircut and whatnot. And so I, I just enjoyed the uh, the aesthetic of Air, and it does have this uh, kind of uh, soundtrack going on in the background the whole time that I, I was very much enjoying. And so, um, yeah, that was number nine is uh air number eight just caught up on this one last night i was extremely excited to see this and i had heard only good things about it this one is godzilla minus one godzilla minus one is a movie that you would expect just to be kind of a generic international blockbuster maybe a little of drama and thrills in between but it it, it com- becomes so much more than that in the best ways possible it it feels like it illuminates what happened in Oppenheimer to such a more visceral degree that is is kind of hard to even explain so it's not really a spoiler to say that Godzilla is supposed to be kind of like a uh, a metaphor for you know like a bomb or some sort of giant um, massive thing happening to you know the Japanese people and it's there the Godzilla is them fighting Godzilla is them basically fighting against whatever that big threat would be and so this was back this is taking place back in World War Two, and so there's this this giant threat that this movie is um, posing with. And this movie's not so much about Godzilla so much as who he is, where he comes from, that the, the, the wanting to know so much more lore about him. It's more about like the construction, the the deconstruction that Godzilla causes, and the construction that. Uh, that has to happen afterwards and the PTSD that the the Japanese people are having to deal with post every time this god uh, every time Godzilla shows up i mean if you see him basically you're fucked i mean you want to get the fuck out of here and so um without giving too much of uh why this movie is so much more uh, I guess superior in my eyes for the, for the franchise of the quote unquote franchise of Godzilla, just in the lore of all the movies that have come out, the Shin Godzilla, Godzilla v Kong, uh, you know the the Godzilla vs Megalodon and all that other stuff. I, I don't you know all of the other types of movies. This is the one that really reckons with the PTSD and the real um, you know the destruction that happens when when uh, Godzilla comes to, you know, the city. And so, um, yeah, this movie, it makes you feel the things. And, it, it you know, it got a little dusty in the house. I, I, I'll just tell you, I was like, you know, trying to make sure nobody was watching me, <laughs> saw me wipe away a tear or anything like that. I was like, you oh, ain't looking at me. Don't worry about me. <laughs> you know, I heard a couple sniffles and, 
in the theater too. So I was like, all right, all right. So, um, continuing on, number seven, Barbie. Yes, we are a Barbie girl, and we are living in a Barbie world. Um, basically, Barbie came out of left field uh, again, uh, such as uh, these other films that I've discussed. These were not films that I was really anticipating being on my top ten, which is always always um, an A-plus, in my opinion. We know movies that come, uh, were unexpected surprises. Barbie, it ended up grossing over, well over $1 billion. I, I think I would have expected half a billion, but a billion is amazing. Not only was the movie a uh, commercial success, it was a critical success. It made bukus of money, the Margot Robbie's instant superstardom now. What's happening, Josh? Good to see you in the, uh, the chat. Uh, you know, everyone give a afternoon tune a, a shout out or a little follow on twitch there's some great guys over there we're doing the uh top 10 today of uh 2023 at least of what we've seen so yeah barbie was on the list of course barbie being um commercial and critical successes um shooting margot robbie and uh the the director respectively straight to the top of the charts of blank check them they can basically make whatever the hell they want first of all let's get out of the way that they i think they said there wasn't going to be a barbie 2 which is a damn lie there's no way that this is going to be a one and done i mean it can't be in my opinion that they've just they've opened a box that cannot uh, you know the the tube cannot uh, contain the toothpaste anymore it is out of the toothpaste the cat is out of the bag um and mattel wants their money as well so I we're going to get a whole bunch of these Polly Pockets, Barbie type movies, and I'm hoping that they're going to be good. You know, I, I think there's potential for them to be as good as like the Lego movie, but, you know, um, and, and as good as the Barbie movie, respectively. So um, and I think they can all potentially be that good, but they got to be done on their own time. The reason that Barbie felt like it was such a phenomenon was because it felt like a labor of love. It felt like the director and the actors just really meshed together in ways that um, not all movies feel like that. Not all movies feel like they are having fun on set. And I think there's a difference in um, the energy when you when you watch it too. So um, yeah, it, it it's a fun time at the movie theater. It's a fun time whether you're watching on streaming, whether you're watching it with a uh, your seven-year-old daughter or your 70-year-old grandmother or so uh, or, or mother whatever um a lot of a lot of fun and um like i said it was unexpected so it just it, it shot up to the top for me and I, I had a great time watching it um poor things is my number what is this uh 10 9 8 7 6 6 is poor things first of all looking at my list right now i don't think there's a better female performance on my list than uh emma stone for best actress she the word i've been hearing everywhere is brave and i i 110 percent am right there with everyone um she lays it all on the line she is acting from 10 different stages of life i i without going into spoilers she puts on a performance i haven't seen in a few years i want to say that i haven't seen something this good since i want to say tony collette and like hereditary but in like a completely different manner like tony collette and hereditary just was like holy shit that just came out of nowhere um but this it this performance feels like it came out of nowhere. It, it kind of feels like between Emma, Emma Stone and um, Jennifer Lawrence's No Hard Feelings and uh, a couple other movies. Mm, this might be a... It's not really a, a spoiler, but with regards to the sexual nature of, uh, you know, re represented in art... Saltburn is up there as well. 
but um, I think these movies are showing a major shift. Maybe not a major shift, but somewhat of a ma- uh, a notable shift of sexuality shown on screen, which I think is a, a prominent thing. I, I think it's a, a a good thing, a strong thing, a, 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 a good thing for that to happen. Um, but yeah, these movies really show, showcased um, some brave brave actors and poor things the reason that i have it all the way at number six is not just because it's uh it's it's an amazing performance by uh, watson but the direction of your ghost lanthimos is is really captivating in my opinion he has uh willem dafoe kind of doing a, a relatively quieter performance with some kind of crazy prosthetics but just the world that we're brought into and uh the world building alone of this movie it's just something that I was like, I could watch several seasons of this. I could, I, I would want to live in the world, or not live in the world, but I want to experience and watch the world a few more times in different other styles and movies. And so, you know, Yorgos Lanthimos um, had The Favor, which was one of the funniest movies of, uh, what year was that, 2019, 2020? I don't have that off the top of my head, but The Favor was also starring um, Emma... Emma Stone in there as well and she's she's wonderful in that as well but this is like a completely new performance and it's like unlocking a brand new side of her alongside seeing her on the curse um it's just uh it's exciting to see a young actress kind of blossom into something that is going to be I think is going to be one of the most memorable performances for the next like 20, 30 years, I think, because I don't think we've seen a performance like this in 20, 30 years. I, I've been watching and studying movies for, um, I don't know, for since 2018 on the podcast. And this is one of the performances that are going to stick out in my mind. Like, God dang, she like, she did it all. And so, the reason that it wasn't higher on my list as well, most of the most of the movies that I'm looking at um, that are you know between five and ten on my list are a tad shaggy in the tooth. So with saying that, I would probably would have taken ten minutes out here or there of the movie, but overall they still really enjoyed. Um, they were really enjoyable experiences. So um, that's poor things. Um, Let's hop on to my number five. We're in the top five, everyone. We're in the top five. Let me get a little bit of water to come back to life. All right. So my number five is Leave the World Behind. Leave the World Behind is a Sam Esmail joint. Basically, the guy that made one of my favorite television shows, Mr. Robot, now, let me put the biggest caveat beside this movie in, in saying this at all. This movie is extremely polarizing. You have to be kind of on the wavelength of it. And you got to understand where he's coming from. If you are not into kind of, uh, I don't know, just more meticulous style like look at the background look at the look at the paintings look at the uh look at the things in the background that are happening if you don't want to be spoon-fed things and you kind of want to figure it out alongside of watching it i think that his movies his tv shows all of that are what you're looking for so uh leave the world behind it's a polarizing ass ending however it was on my wave- wavelength. Julia Roberts, Mahershala Ali, Ethan Hawke, everyone, the the kids that are in it. Uh, I think there's no weak points. I think the biggest uh, issue for most people would probably be the ending. However, I've heard that he, he knew how polarizing the ending was going to be, and so, um, yeah, knowing that he knew what he was doing. And I think it, it, the the movie is beautiful, and I think it has Todd Campbell as the cinematographer, which is one, is his go to guy. So, uh, for Mister Robot, which was one of my favorite looking shows, um, so 
So let's go to number four. This one happened at the beginning of the uh, year too. This was, I think, this was a February or March, early March release. And this one is. Hold on. Um. So my. Well, let me uh, reset that. So um. What are we back to? Number four, Guardians of the Galaxy, three was one of the most interesting pieces of Marvel cinematic, um, I don't know, just filmography that they've had since Endgame. A lot of their stuff has been lacking. Some of the, the departments have complained about the VFX being overworked, this, that, and the other. I thoroughly and genuinely believe that James Gunn did a, a phenomenal job with Guardians of the Galaxy 3 and I'm not a be I'm not a big Chris Pine was a Chris Pine Chris Pratt Chris Pratt fan I'm a Chris Pine guy I'm not a Chris Pratt guy there's too many Chris's anyways um with watching Guardians of the Galaxy 3 it just showed the darker more slightly more realistic take you could have with um Marvel, if you really dissect and ask questions about, you know, what is going on, like what what are the implications of animals actually being tested on Rocket Raccoon as a talking animal? Are we going to address that? You know, and they do. And it's like kind of horrifying and terrifying. And it's actually more of a reflection on real life than not. And so that's why I'm like, this is a notable piece of work, in my opinion. So, Guardians of the Galaxy 3 goes places that I didn't think Marvel would be able to go, given that they've been pretty weak in their last uh, phase and a half since, you know, Endgame. It's been kind of shaky. This is one of the movies that you can really look at and say, damn, they really did a good job. So, the um, on continuing on, we have, what else do we have? Spider-Man. Oh, sorry. I, I, I just uh, blew, blew the load. Sorry. But actually, but uh, Spider-Man's in there, but I won't tell you which one it is. My number three movie. Now, I just want to be uh, clear. I, You know, I have some buddies uh, and some friends and some other people that have said, you know, I've gotten some... Uh, recommendations from me and whatnot and i wasn't too crazy about them well just because i recommend a movie it's not a broad recommend it's more of a if you align your taste with me or the type of movies that i like or if you understand the type of movie that i'm describing to you then i will um i will recommend it but i'm not just gonna willy-nilly recommend everything to everybody I, you know this is a top 10 list that you can kind of pick and choose the the type of maybe genre or type of movie that you think you're going to more align with and like you know if you like superhero more blockbuster ass movies more or more indie style movies over here or you know um slightly more traditional style movies i feel like there's all of this is reflected within the list and so just about all of these uh, you'll find something good you really like so let's go to the number three movie let's get it everyone it is they cloned tyrone so this was a movie that i was uh, I had no idea that was coming out. I was like, what? They cloned Tyrone? I saw like one or two, um, one or two posters being advertised on the, the, the home screensaver of Netflix and whatnot, you know, and when it's kind of shuffling along slowly. But when, um, when that is, when that's showing, I'm like, you know, maybe they're just trying to advertise it. And then I read it a little bit closer. I was like, ooh, John Boyega. Ooh, Jamie Foxx. Ooh. Um, it's not a... Uh, hold on, give me a second. I'm going to find her, her name real quick. I completely based out. Um, come on now. Anyways, as I'm typing, um, the movie ends up being much more of a... A comedy thriller than I was even expecting and 
it's uh, kind of a. I mean, you can kind of have the. It's not spoiled, but I mean, it's in the title. It's it's a sci-fi as well, and so the movie takes you in unexpected places. Jamie Fox is so damn funny. Um, I'm trying to find that actress's name real quick. Um, Tiana Paris. Okay, yeah, she's great in it too. I had a wonderful time with. Um, the cast is just really damn good in this movie. And on top of it being kind of like a, a thriller sci-fi, and it, and it 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 doesn't say comedy, but I was laughing my ass off just about the whole time. Um, I think this movie is like an underrated gem still because most people haven't seen it. Um, they clone Tyrone definitely deserves top three of the uh, of the list. And based off of looking at it, I think that's probably my yeah. It's I mean, Barbie is a comedy as well, and so is Poor Things to an extent, but They Clone Tyrone is probably my number one um, through-and-through comedy, I would say. Um, And so number two, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Let's preface this again by saying this movie has, um, I mean... It's it's the Empire Strikes Back. It's the part two of easily a part three of th- a three part um, trilogy. We um, had I don't know what was was Spider Man. Uh, what was it? Let me see when Across the Spider Verse was. Spider Verse one. Um, 2018, yeah, 2018, and the other one came out in 2023, so it has been quite a long time since, um, the first one, and that was at the end of 2018, you know, December 1st, um, but it had been a while since we had gotten that style, our favorite characters, that movie, I think it got best animated movie of the year, and... Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse basically continues the world in in every single fashion. I think it's it's not um I personally don't think it's better. I think it just accompanies it like oil and vinegar. And they just they go together so well, but in the way that the first one felt like a minimalism type style to it and it had all these crazy different 2d 3d animations comic book styles everything was flipping in between i was losing your fucking mind look like you're on an acid trip and it was uh, amazing um this one feels like the maximalist version of the movie uh across the spider-verse so when things were happening shit was going nuts everything everywhere was going all different directions and crazy um you know it's the it's kind of got the sequelitis in kind of the best ways of you know oh you like spider-man well you're gonna get most spider-man and you're gonna get colorful spider-man you're gonna get all the t-rex spider-man you know it's all in the advertising it they the advertising did kind of spoil a, a chunk of what you're gonna see but there's so much fun to be had with this movie and it is such an artistic feast um it feels like you're walking through like a museum of modern art of comic books, just watch, you know, watching different styles of animation um, go through, and it's 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 a beautiful piece that I could just watch in the background of uh, of something. You know, I don't even have to have the sound on, but uh, on top of it having a beautiful artistic vision, the um, the the music and everything too is in in the voices. I think uh, the uh, the new voices in here. Um, actually, we have some of the old returning voices, you, uh, a voiceover is coming back for from the previous movie. But, um, you know, like Sh- I think his name's Shamik Moore, and um, it's you know, playing Miles Morales. I just like seeing and 
and kind of growing up with these characters, even though it is taken four or five years in between some of these movies. Hopefully the next one's going to be scheduled sooner than, than later because of the strikes, everything's going to be pushed a little bit further. Um, but um, I am so excited for more Spider-Verse. You know, the style is, is easily going to transition into um, what other animations are going to try to mimic as well. I mean, you can see television shows on, on Netflix starting to try to just now catch up to this type of style and whatnot. And so I've enjoyed Spider-Verse to, to, to the nth degree. I can't talk about it any, any better than that. It's just the most vibrant saturated uh time maximalist time that you can watch on screen that i can think of in most recent history at least in animation um and on top of that it has heart you know y'all know i love some good heart in my um movies so the number one movie of the list the number one movie of the list. Are there any guests? Are there any any guests? Does anyone have any guests? Um, if you have a guess, throw it in the comment section in the VOD, or if you're in, you're in the live, go ahead and throw that in there, and um, we will see if you're correct. But uh, I'll give you about 15 seconds to do that. You're like, hmm, what do you think is the best movie? Hmm, well, blockbuster, a little indie. A little comedy, a little drama. What are we? What What are we talking? Well, for me, it was uh, mostly a combination of all of those things. But here is my number one movie of twenty twenty three. And again, this could have been this could have been all different if I saw all the movies. Past lives may have gotten up here. We don't know, but that was the only movie that I had heard might have made it up here. But let's get let's do it. Number one of 2023, The Holdovers. The Holdovers is, without a doubt, my number one movie of 2023 because, one, I might have seen it at the right right time with the right people. You know, uh, my mother and I went and saw a movie after her uh after her birthday on the um right past thanksgiving and so it was after thanksgiving it was before christmas it's cold outside this is kind of a cold wintry sad christmas movie that has some uh amazing writing in there and it is basically just uh, you know we're held up snowed in with Paul Giamatti is one of the most interesting and likable, well, bristly likable individuals. And we have, uh, we we just have a stellar cast of everyone. I don't have everyone's name, name off the top of my head, but we have a first time actor that is leading uh, one of the children. But basically... Um, We're snowed in over school break, uh, winter school break, and it's just one of the most endearing, heartfelt movies I have seen in what feels like two or three years since maybe pre-pandemic, but it is a beautiful-ass movie. It's funny in ways that you wouldn't expect. It's sad in, in many ways as well. Um, You care about these characters and you kind of just feel like you're nestled in and snowed in for maybe, I think maybe it's just under two hours. The movie doesn't feel like it's nearly that long at all. Um, Let me get a a couple more details on it. But the the main thing about this movie is it it's one of those sad movies that kind of make you leave, make you leave feeling still just, you know, still warm inside um so it's paul giamani uh, obviously playing uh, a version of paul giamani because uh, he's always kind of like his multiverse self i feel like he's a character actor that just kind of plays like versions of himself in each different movie but this is one of my favorite movies so it's a two hour 13 minute 
comedy drama. I'd leave he- I'd lean heavily on the drama, but I did have very heavy laughs in it. Um, Dominic Sessa is playing Angus. He's first time actor. I don't think I don't have anything else on his uh, resume. So this was an impressive opening for uh, young Sessa and uh, Divine Joy Randolph. I I've seen her maybe in a couple one or two smaller roles, but um, you probably recognize her. Uh, Dolomite is my name, I believe, was the last movie I really remember her in. Um, She's in Only Murders in the Building as one of the cops as well. But she plays one of the... uh, She plays Mary Lamb. Uh, She plays the... One of the cafeteria ladies that has to kind of stay over the Christmas break and make sure everyone has food that's still there. And um, it's just a very endearing ass movie I, it was just a movie i was not ready for i had heard that it was good but it was it's shot in this way that makes it feel like it's an old 70s movie and it's edited in ways that just kind of they hold the shot a little bit extra long um it kind of feels a little bit documentary-esque that it, we're not doing super fancy uh uh close-ups or anything like that i think alexander payne is the director but and i'm aware of uh you know the stuff behind the scenes about that i, I i'll let y'all google all that stuff um i don't have anything really to comment about that but from the the movie's point point of view it's one of the most endearing um movies and heartfelt movies i've seen in a very long time enjoy the hell out of it um let me think. Dominic Sessa, he's probably going to rise to an instant star if he can if he can snag another project like this. Like it's, he looks like he's been acting for all his life, and I think this is his first um, debut. So I was very impressed with that. Um, Divine Joy Randolph might get. Um, I think that actually she is one of the best uh, supporting acts of a movie of the year the problem i'm actually thinking that she might actually be up i don't know if there's anyone else i can think of that had a better supporting role um do they put supporting roles of males uh the men and women the same supporting role i'm actually not sure about that like best supporting actress best supporting actor i think they do that so she might have the the hold on best supporting actress if that's correct I'm not sure. I I forget that they change the rules all the time. And, um, yeah. So, anyways, a sad Christmas movie to end the top top 10 of uh, 2023. It's this list is completely different from the previous year's list. We'll link everything, uh, that has to do with, uh, the list in the description. I do kind of want to give some shout outs about movies that just got uh, bumped off of the 2023 movie list um infinity pool very psychological weird mission impossible a lot of fun blockbuster elemental very heartfelt uh comedy saisu uh, straight yeet the nazis uh blackberry that was uh, that was a funny interesting good time um are you there god it's me margaret dream sequence the iron claw we'll just go ahead and go down the list real quick and um we won't do the whole list but we'll just show you where everything is for a second you are so not invited my bot mitzvah adam sandler and his daughter did a daughters did a very good job in that dungeons and dragons may december blue beetle extraction 2 oppenheimer talk to me the flash knock at the cabin the blackening gran turismo no hard feeling 65 renfield the the list keeps on going if you'd like to listen to a, a more condensed review of uh you know the the reviews just let me know we'll do we'll consider doing some more reviews of uh some of the movies that we didn't catch over the year um but i will put the entire 2023 list from the top 10 all the way to the bottom i think it's it's at least about 50 50 different movies um but you can see the number one worst movie on the bottom i'll I'll give the i'll i'll release the number two right now just let y'all know just so it came out recently 
Um, the first one grossed a billion dollars, and this one, what the hell happened here? My second worst movie of the year was Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. Is it the Lost or the Last? I think it's the Lost, but it should be the Last too. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, for um, the entire list, check the links out below. Thank you for listening, watching Luck It Out Podcast. You know what to do to support the podcast. Like, follow, subscribe on any of your favorite platforms. Um, Luck It Out Podcast dot com has all the links to all of the descriptions of all of the good stuff that we provide um you know where to find us uh we are active on threads now since the destruction of uh uh twitter has happened we have officially integrated over to the threads account and so you'll be able to find us there look it up at look it up podcast you know where to find us thank you for listening watching look it up podcast take it easy also, let me know what your favorite movies were this year. Did were there movies that I didn't get, did not get to see that were on your list, or um, did our ma- our list kind of match? Let me know what um, what you're thinking and uh, how we can improve the podcast. You know what to do. Take it easy.